Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Creative Week class with Jose Extravaganza. Um, I hope you guys can all hear us okay. Um, we are coming at you all live from New York uh, in mid, well, I guess kind of midtown area. Right? Midtown of, area, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, but really quickly, um, just so everyone um, is set, make sure you have comfortable shoes and clothing on and um, water as well set aside if you'd like to participate in the voting aspect. But first and foremost, for those who don't know who Jose is, um, Jose is a native New Yorker who started his dance career at the age of seven um, and eventually continued his academic and dance education at the famed LaGuardia High School here yes. in New York City. <laughs> and during his formative years, he encountered the New York City ballroom underground scene, where he was introduced to the legendary house of extravaganza and where his technical dance training melded with the street dance called Vogue. His mastery of this dance led him to be featured in Jenny Livingston's Paris is Burning, and his relationship with superstar Madonna um, so impressed her that she invited him to audition for her troupe. He beat out 7,000 competing dancers and earned himself a spot as one of the lead dancers featured in Madonna's London Vision World Tour. He was also featured, of course, in the cult film documentary classic Truth or Dare, and he was also nominated for Best Choreography and Music Video at the MTV Video Music Award, jumpstarting his career as a dancer, choreographer, yes. artist, creative director. <laughs> and as a choreographer, he worked with Aretha Franklin, Tony Bennett, Rolling Stones, Icona Pop, just to name a few. <laughs> just a few casual ones. Um, but most recently, you've also worked um, with Baz Luhrmann for the Netflix series The Get Down, but also you've consulted on every single season of Pose. Yes. yes. Did I miss anything out? Did I leave anything no, out? No, I think pretty much you covered everything. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> things that I don't even remember. <laughs> you're still the father. Yes, the father of the house of extravaganza at the moment, yes. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you for joining us today for this class. Oh, we already you. have a couple of questions from people and a lot Great. of um, love in the chat um, uh, as cool. well. Um, but I wanted to get started, um, again, just for those who may not be as familiar, with what are people going to walk out of here knowing today? What, what, what will they do? Oh my god, aside from learning, you know, the the art form that is voguing, you know, you're going to learn the history of it, you know, and what it was born from, and just, you know, the, the, the whole uh, knowledge of knowing, you know, where exactly and why and all those things that I think create the dance, you know, so it's not just movement, you know, there's a, yeah. there's, there's a story behind this this craft, you know. We've talked a lot about how sometimes that's missing, but people now know voguing and they think about it from, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race or, you know, another yeah, show. Yeah. But oftentimes, I know you've talked about how people are missing the feeling and the history. The of it. history behind it and what it meant to these people. I think with any craft, I like to think if you know the history of it, it takes such a different meaning. You know, it means something, especially when it's real life, you know, it's like, so it's definitely, we're going to be learning some of that today of what it was born from and, and what made it so popular, how it is today. Like, mm. We are very excited to learn more. Um, I guess as a first question for you, before we dive into the actual dance portion, where did voguing come from? Well, voguing, where did it come from? I think I, I remember it as far as back as the 60s, I want to say. I mean, that was the story when I came out into the community. You know, it's been around for a minute. You know, it's not something that, you know, I invented or that Madonna did or whatever, you know. It's something that uh, has been around for a minute, you know, in our community. You know, it was done a lot in the Harlem drag balls, you know. So that's where it began. And back then, it was just a series of poses. You know, it wasn't has progressed definitely back then the way it is today, you know, so it was very different and it was born in the in the 60s and 70s, you know, during the days of whacking, whacking was popular. So it was those two things that I remember hearing and hearing about and that was still being done when I came out in the community. And so, yeah, it was done in the Harlem Drag Balls back in the 60s and 70s. Right when yeah. I think it was black and brown, um, people were uh, completely omitted from white pageants. Yes, yes. Yeah, so they kind of, we kind of created our own thing, 
you know, the, the drag queens as they were referred to back then, you know, said created their own competition, you know, and born were the Bulls of Harlem. Can you describe what happens at a ball and also explain what houses are? Oh, wow. what happens at a ball? I mean, my experience the first time was something like this was like experiencing some kind of utopia, you know, some kind of like galaxy. You know, it's something out of this world, as corny as that may sound. I mean, it definitely is an experience that can be life changing for someone who needs to feel that energy, that self love, that, that proudness that rubs off and is so infectious, you know? So it's definitely for me, I, at my first ball, most of it spent it with my mouth open. <laughs> Just like in awe of the beauty, the creativity, the talent that oozed out of these individuals that were like me, like just regular people, you know, with this attitude as like, we're stars, you know, we're yeah. all here and we're here to strut our stuff, as they say. So it was a competitive energy, you know, a talented energy, but definitely a competitive one. You, you know, have, like the competition aspect, the houses, the yeah. houses are essentially almost teams that compete. You yeah. want to explain a little bit more about families, just I'm sorry for people who don't uh, know. And then you talk a little bit about how you got into the house of experiment. Okay. Houses. Well, houses, aside from the ballroom aspect of what they mean, also it's like a family. You know, a lot of these kids and a lot of uh, a lot of these kids at the community you know, LGBTQ, you know, a lot of them had been disowned by family, you know, because of how they chose to live and how they were, you know, they were outcasted, not only from families, but from society itself, you know, so these houses were created as a form of family, you know, you create one, you know, and, and so the houses mean that, you know, aside from also in that ballroom world, it's a competition so the different organizations the different houses the different gangs you know as i refer to them they're like gay gangs <laughs> you know that gay gangs of new york you know so it runs like that yeah loyalty plays a major part you know you know looking out for each other so all those things aside from the ballroom aspect of it the family is very important in these houses because like i said a lot of these people in, in that community in our community uh, didn't have that luxury of having people to support them and, and like love them and care about them. So, you know, it was like these houses were created for that, to support, to create, you know, and definitely it was something to see at these balls when they would happen, to see the different kinds of family, families that sit together, you know, and support each other, you yeah. know, and have each other's back when they were walking, competing in all these different categories where it was so competitive and the energy was so alive. I mean, it's definitely something to experience. Yeah. So why the house of extravaganza? Oh, well, why the house of extravaganza for me? Wow. It's something that, again, coming into the ballroom scene, as I was saying, it's a very competitive scene. You know, it's very, we all want to be the best and we're all here to show our stuff. So, uh, seeing how the house of extravaganza, when I first saw them, I, not even knowing who they were, I thought they were rock stars. You know, I'm like, who are these people? Honestly, this was before I even joined any house, you know? And I had a lot of friends that were already part of these houses. So I was always like, who's who's that? And weirdly, I mean, not always the greatest things were said about them, but I quickly, that in that instant, as these you words were being, yeah, I knew why they weren't. You know, because yeah. they were so fabulous. That's why, you know. So I definitely had to be a part of that, you know. And what are your duties as a father of a house? Oh, wow. Our duties, uh, so many. I mean, <laughs> and it, can, it can range from so many things. <laughs> it can range from so many things. It's from meet me. I left my cell phone in the restaurant. Let's go back. <laughs> After like you're an hour and a half away from the destination where we were just there going back at the wee hours to search for this phone and it ranges from also you know helping them get ready teaching them you know a lot of them are upcoming artists and teaching them what i know about the business and what i've learned you know and so it's a lot of that on the business aspect of it trying to guide them through that you know and inspire them in any which way that i can so provide inspiration for them as they do to me 
you know? And I think that those are definitely the top du top duties. If not, oh my God, it ranges from literally you feel like you want to kill them sometimes, you know, because they're just like kids. And I see yeah. myself in a lot of them, you know, growing up, you know, it's like reflecting mirror to see their energy and it keeps me on my toes as well. So it, yeah, it's a beautiful thing though. I wouldn't take it any other way, you know, for sure. Um, we already have a couple questions. So I'll go to some of the audience questions, which by the way, if you guys have any, you just have to hit the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen to submit, or you can throw them in the chat and we'll be sure to answer as many as we can before the end of class. You can ask Jose anything. Um, I just have a couple more questions, Jose, we can get right into the voting part. Um, I guess, how did you see, what did you see with voting like suddenly kind of taking on steam and like gaining so much traction? Like what was that journey like? And where do you think Vogue is going? Oh my God, well, seeing its progression throughout the years, you know, it's been crazy, you know, to see it because that's all that, you know, the, the, the kids that created this, that's all they ever wanted was to it to be done on, on a stage you know, on a runway, in a music video, you know, these are all things that inspired, they aspired for it to do, you know, to Vogue in Paris, you know, so to see all those things accomplished, you know, and not only being a part of it too, you know, it's like surreal, you know, and to see it come this far on television shows, like polls, and it's given such a platform, and not only that, such a great opportunity for the community, you know, I think it's great, you know, because it's an opportunity that was never given, you know, especially at the arts, you know. So now to hear that voguing is being taught in some school in Russia as part of their dance curriculum, to be a part of that is simply like surreal, you know. Where yeah. do you kind of see, now that we know that vogue is really, it's not becoming, already is kind of main, in like the mainstream ether at this point, um, where do you see it going? Like what's um, next? Or what's the art of voting? What's next? I think there's so much more to, you know, to, 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 to do. It needs to be featured. It needs its feature, you know, because I think that these shows, and aside from just telling uh, uh, stories about the community and shows like Pose and stuff like that, and representing, you know, showing the style of voting and stuff like that, there's still so much more that goes into it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I see it on the map, at the map. I see it being part of, you know, Lincoln Center and their seasons of ballet and modern dances where these troops perform, you know, for a ticket that's like $500, you know, to pay just to see. And I think voguing, it, it needs that, it deserves that, you know, and right. that's where I would love to see it. That's where it needs to go, you know. Yeah, it doesn't have to just be changed mm -hmm. to nightclubs. And right, bars. yeah, exactly, you know. Be, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Paris Opera House, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Scala, you know, things like that. I need to see that, and I hope the way it's going, the way it's moving, I, I have a feeling that that can happen. You I know, think so too. yeah, where you create, you'll see a beautiful choreographed, you know, ballet, you know, where it's like on um, that setting, that beautiful stage, <laughs> you know, with the velvet seats and the velvet curtain. That's the next you know, time. yeah, I, it needs that absolutely. It needs that opportunity because the, the artistry, the art, is there. It's there for that Bravo moment. Yes. Um, speaking so much about Vogue, um, how would you describe the key elements, or how do you know when you're looking at Vogue? What are the how do you know when you're looking at it? I mean, it's so distinctive. It's so precise. It's so sharp. You know, agile. You know, and attention getting. You know, that you know it when you see it. It's this attitude where the minute you see that hands on the hip and, and that shoulder is like, oh, wait a minute. You know, to me, it's that is that's what dif differentiates it from the rest, you know, because it's a dance of self proudness, you know, where no technique is really needed to learn it. You know, you don't have to study 12, 13 years of ballet to be considered a vulgar, you know? And I think that, you know, you see it, you see its rawness, you see its beauty, you see that this individual has kind of like a story to tell through its movement. And you're like, why is his arm so sharp? And so, and this attitude, oh my God, you know, it's been, it's never been, it's not what dance is usually known for. Right. 
right. you know, for its arrogance and attitude, and you know, its 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 power to you know to have you get served, as they say. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm um, legendary. They talk so much about the five elements. Would you say that that is true? That there are distinctly five elements, and what are they? Hmm, to me, yeah, I think yeah, those elements have always been there. I like to say, <laughs> you know, those elements to me have always been a part of the Vogue, you know, history, yeah. the Vogue, the dance. You know, I think those elements have always been there, except now there's a name for. Yeah. You know, now there's rules to having them. Like, right? because I, when I was voguing, you know, I, uh, we didn't have those five elements, but knowing what they are and what they consist of, they what made my voguing in a way. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, there's those five elements to it, but it, it it's also uh, something that in my generation was presented different. It just wasn't, it, it, meaning it was the same thing. It was just, there was no main, it right. wasn't labeled as that. You know, it was, it's what the dance is made of. So it's obvious that they're going to be there. And how do I feel about them? Um, yeah, they're pretty much on it. But I think that it's something that, uh, I don't know, if you don't have them, that doesn't mean you're not a home girl. Right. You know, because to be honest, I mean, I was, didn't really don't walk a lot, you know, and I was voguing, you know. Back then, it was both performance, pop, dip, and spin. So we were popping, dipping, and spinning, you know? And yeah, and occasionally there was that little walk, you know? Yeah. You know, again, it's just really, it, was, it just didn't have a name, but it was always there. And I think now with both the fam, I think now that that's the focus of that, you know, for both fam, you know, I understand that for both fam, they're a must. It's yeah. part of it, they look for that. But you know, yeah, for the dance, it's like new way, like I said, I really don't walk and I. We actually have a couple of questions about uh, dance. Maybe we'll do a couple of them and let's jump right into the routine. Um, we have people who are giving me love from Colombia. Um, oh my God, wow. Yeah, <laughs> um, as well as a couple other places as well. Um, but let's do a couple of these audience questions. Um, Heidi Chen asks How many categories are there for new way throughout its history? How many categories are there for new way throughout its history? I think it's just that, that one new way category, I think, unless anything has, you know, you just never know if someone said, you yeah. know, I don't know, you just never know. They might have like, now there's five different new way elements. But um, yeah, but no, I think new way dates back to what it's always been. I mean, they named it new way as a form, you know, when I was coming in doing the dance or, you know, uh, incorporating my dancing abilities and my flexibility. It was just a me and a, a few others that were able to do that, you know, people like Green yeah. Ninja and stuff like that. And so they named it that as a, as a way to divide it, you know, yeah. because a lot of people couldn't do that. So it became old way and new way. But as far as it having different variations, new way, no, I don't. Kind of related, Michelle Wynn asked, have you walked or considered any other categories besides performance categories? And why new way? Much love from London. I, this is a personal to me. Mm -hmm. um, I've walked other things throughout the years. Yeah, I participated in house productions, you know, where it called for the mother and father to appear with their children, you know, things like that. I, I've walked a runway throughout the years, you know, so definitely I've walked other stuff as a member of the House of Extravaganza, you know, but, oh, and as far as uh, why New Way, I think, uh, I think that it definitely, I guess, because of my dance background, I think that played a major part in me being inspired by it to do it and to create on it, you know, as a dancer, you always like to see things and dance around it and create around it and take it and make it different. You know, so that's kind of like when, what I, what drove me. I wanted to take it and make it my own and create something that was never seen before. Since that was the, one of the main things you had to bring to a wall in order to be seen and compete and win. So I made sure of, of taking it and making it that, yeah. The last question before we jump into um, the routine portion um, is, at what moment did you know that you were fit to be a house father? Oh, wow, what moments did I know? To be honest with you, when I first, I mean, to remember way back, I've been asked on, throughout the years a few times to be 
the father of the house of the extravaganza. You know, I came into it as a baby. I was the baby of the house at one point. So to me, when I got asked to be a part of, to be the father, you know, when a lot of things, a lot of changes started to happen, not just within the house, but amongst the world, you know, and I was still a kid, <laughs> you know, so I felt like I couldn't fit those shoes as father. So for a while, it was such a big honor to me to be looked upon as my job. You know, I mean, I truly am honored to be able to be part of this legacy as a father figure, you know, but to me, it, it's, it's, it's something that I can't say that I'm going to be the father of the house because I vogue and I'm, you know, Madonna band, you know, it was something that to me, I bow down to and it's what it's what I don't know makes me who I am. I feel just need to be a father to all of them, and 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 be represent that father figure of what it is to be a father in a house, in the ballroom community. So. Thank you yeah. so much, Jose, Thank for you. all of these questions. We'll still continue to answer more um, towards the end of class, um, but I think we can go ahead and get started into the dance portion. Um, okay. Let's, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, we're going to learn Vogue, right? We're going to learn some new way, right? Uh, again, I'm going to be teaching you just the basics, new way arms, you know, that again, you can adapt to any type of voguing style. You know, it's not just new way arms, but they're Vogue arms, okay? I'm just going to put this aside over here. Go for it. I know we have some introductions to make as well. Yes. We, we have a special have. guest in the house. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, we have some introductions to make. We have here uh, some some members of, of the house. They're going to be working with us. Maximo, you know, and, and Alvarez, you know, they're here to kind of like show you and demonstrate stuff and, you know, participate with you, with me, you know. All right. So we're going to begin first with like a, a simple thing as well, just simple Simon Says type of thing, you know, poses, just like following the leader, you know, I don't want to just come in and spring a routine on you guys, and it's like, so first, we're going to play this game, like, follow the leader, follow my movements, kind of like the Simon Says type of thing, you have to uh, try and follow the movement as best way as you can, voguing a lot of the, the poses, a lot of the movement, they don't have names, so you have to, it's on site, so you have to watch, and you have to, uh, be sure, because I can't call anything out. So you have to be diligent. Mm. I have a little bit, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, a little bit, sure. Yeah, that's perfect. Now okay. we can see your feet. Okay, we're going to begin. <laughs> We're going to begin with just basic arms, vogue arms. You know, you have to picture yourself some type of statue, some type of mannequin, something you would see in the museum. You know, you have to have this mentality because that's what's going to be. You know, you have to try to portray these things. Voguing is so vivid and visual that you have to see it mentally and you have to imagine yourself some of these things. You know, otherwise it won't be. So we're going to begin with basic arm to the side, basic arm to the side. Arm up, down, here, like a genie, like, kind of like, you know, a magician, right? Again, side, up, down, here, here, here. So they're very asymmetrical, uh, very symmetrical arms, very symmetrical movement, right? Let's take it down. Here, like you give yourself a hug. I mean, again, there's no names for the, for the movement, so you're going to hear me say things like that. Give yourself a hug. We're going to turn into all types of animals and, and like statues, and we're going to become so many things. All right, so from here, just a slip of the wrist. Pop. And give me fingers. Here. 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 Good, guys. Here. Here, 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 here. This is the whole movement we're gonna put together. 
down, up, 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 down. Very good, good guys. Again, the standing with the feet to win bowing. I just want to say all these little things. So when we break into the little routine and the choreography and I'm teaching it to you, you guys already have this in mind, all right? Again, the stands, what the feet do. Just for starters, again, we're not gonna learn it all in one day. What the feet do is either gonna be a fourth position, like in ballet, this is a fourth, or a, or a sixth position, feet closed. We'll begin with that, you know? So let's begin, right? We're gonna do again some Simon Says Arms and we're gonna add a foot, we're gonna add feet, you know? All right, again, just simple. And these things, you have to remember bowing, very important, shoulders on your ears. Everything is a silhouette. If I turn off the lights, you should be like in this pose, something you would see in a museum, you know? Yeah, shoulders in your ears, and now we want to see neck, all of this spacing. It's what voguing is. You have to remember, the, it borrows the name from the magazine. It's something you would see in a magazine, okay? Here we go again. Simple. Boom, 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 boom. Good. We give our eyes. Again, this dance is attitude. And without it, you have nothing. So attitude, give me eyes. Yes. Go back. Again here and open and down. So let's hit. Taka, give me here, 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 double tap, double tap, double. It's like you're fanning your face, you're circling your face. All right, keep that in mind. You know, I want to make sure that I explain these things in case there's someone that's never even seen this dance. Yes gets to learn, all right? So we're gonna begin, I think that's pretty good. Ah, wait, let's show you some feet, some feet. We're gonna do some arms and every now and then you're gonna see me, you know, uh, do a, a little foot thing, all right? So let's go with your simple arms again. Doom, 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 like a model. Doom. Again, doom, 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 doom. doom. So, so it'll be that, you know, now stay here with the feet, bring the arms down. You can go over here, da 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 So it'll be that, again, you'll probably be here and be in fourth. So this is your stance while you do arms. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha
See, kind of like what we did earlier, but up to there again, okay? It's the mark. And this is on the end. And one, two, three. And again, as a magician, dot. Cross it like scissors, right? Flip it. Cross it and present it to the front. And then it goes down. This thing is like moving your arms in down. And this is all shapes. Yeah. Like the top of the Empire State Building is what you think. Right? Again, let's take it again. Five, six, seven, and the beating. Da, da, da. Da, 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 you know, moving something out of the way is the way to describe it, you know, and taking a step. Boom. And then this comes here. And then from there, let's close it, you know. I always like to add foot movement. It can get very boring if we're just sitting here doing all these arms. All right, so we're going to take again on the end. <laughs> and add a little body. Yeah, don't be afraid to do that. And swing it the other way. Present it forward and down. And this is like a needle, a steep one. Empire State Building here. It goes here like a King Tut type thing, right? And then it goes down here. You frame the face. It goes down, and then down. And then from here, we're going to take one step back, right? And the other one is going to join it and stop. And then you're going to pop into this position. Right? Is that good? Any questions? No? We're just going to mark it again. Okay? Five, six, seven, and three, in fact, that's so, and then here, 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 and then this is kind of like a plie type thing. And then you go here. Yeah? Is that good? Any questions? What's the, what's the, last, what's the last shape? Which one both hands? Yes. Okay. Right? Is that good? All right, let's mark it again. One last time and then we'll add another, another few times. Okay? Five, six, seven, and dee dee da. <laughs> and this is like you throw something. Like that arm comes out present, voguing. It's, you know, in a battle form. You know, you have to be ready to stand. Ooh. And then the other foot comes and joins it. And you're here. You know, your arms, they, they have power. <laughs> They're powerful, You're like an X-Men. Right? And then from there, yes, right? The thing up, it's like I said, a superhero. You're flying. <laughs> and then you go here. Yeah, let's take it up to there. And let's try to do it faster, man. Maybe let's do it with music, mm -hmm. right? One last one. It will probably be a little quicker, too, I'm sure, the music. We'll pick up a little speed. Five, six, seven, and in the one, and the two, and three, and four, five, six, seven. Ha, 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 ha. We're going to add the foot. You saw that? Let's do it again. Add the foot. Ha, right? High and then stay there and then close it. Yeah, like we're about to take off. All right, let's do it again. And five, six, and seven, and then it's all one. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and five. Nice. Good. Good. You guys at home, 
I'll show you one one more time. You know, like that you guys, you know, know it as well. You know, you know for some it may be a little hard, but okay. Let's take it again. Five, six, seven, and it's a one, it's a two, it's a three, it's a four, it's a five, six, seven, eight. Da, 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 da. Yes, let's see with music. <coughs> let's try with music. And I want to see you guys do it. I'm going to go right And then you guys are going to demonstrate it for a little bit. Any questions? Any questions, Maximo? All right, guys, you ready? And I'm closing. Oh, yeah, just hold it on. Right, I'm going to do it right this time. Here you go. Hey. 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 From here, right, it goes here, 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 here. Let's try that. Okay, so we just went through. And it goes from here, back, front, it's back, front first, right? And then here. Here, here. Mark one more time. All right, so we just went here. All right. And it goes and the ticket, 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 Let's try that again. I think I'm doing this on the wall. Okay, where 
because they finished the last one, let's say, we just finished here, right? Let's say. And then from here, we went where? We just did the last one and it went here, right? And then what did I do? I went forward. It's just literally a step. I kind of like it's doable. It'll be fierce if you can do the same leg, the same leg. Okay, let's say we just finished where, guys. Right? And in two. Let's walk again. It gets a little tricky there, right? Let's try. So we just did what was our last thing and it's key, right? Let's take it from here. It goes and to the back, to the front, and side, and side. It, are you all right? It flips, it flips, it flips, it flips. It's forward, back, 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 back. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah? Try to. What are you saying? Yes. No, wait. It goes back first, right? Ha, two, ha. Ha, no. This first time is two. All right? You guys at home, it starts back first. Ha, ha. And literally, if it, if it, if, when it feels momentum, it'll look a lot better. Okay? And then from here, your arms push and they go here. Right? Like we did earlier. And then from here, you literally take a step. And you just watch it, you know, just to have the feet do something. And then from here, you go here, you go here. There's like a bow and arrow, guys. Yeah. Ha. Ha. Yeah, give it that attitude, that bow attitude. Ha. Ha. Right? Let's just do to that part. All right. Let's start and mark it from the beginning with you guys. Take it slow, no music. Five, six, seven, and it's that two. I got it. I got it. Eat, 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 and laugh with the other. Where are you seated? Ha. I'm swiveling. Everybody, I see that. Yeah, right. Ha. Ha. Like a ha. Yes. Right. All right. Again, let's mark it. Let me see you guys. Let's mark it with well. Yeah, let's mark it. I want to see what it looks like. And these guys are helping see the mouth. Five, six, seven, five, six, seven, ha. Ha. Ha, 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 nice, ha, ha, and step, ha, 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 Okay, well, um, let's mark it and then we'll just mark it out with we'll it a little couple of times, okay? Five, six, just mark real quick, and so on. It's the two. Four, five, 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 Them do it's just a basic bit. The voting, it is like 
part of the five elements <laughs> that they speak of. Yeah, it's one of them. Okay, so that's it. That's it. All right, let's try again, guys. Try again with the music. Okay, and just give it. Yeah. And five. <laughs> Okay, you want to go now? Like... Yes, my guys, that anything. Five, six, here we go. Actually, we know kind of, well, some people, some of us know early on that it was only going to be a few season type thing. You know, I mean, of course, during the process, I'm like, no, it's going to change because it's so great, so fabulous, you know, they're going to want another season. But yeah, I think that they, um, you know, early on, it was already a known fact that um, that we weren't going to do anything after, after the third season. Thank you so much. Um, another question that we received is, um, are you still in touch with the blonde and Mission dancers? Yes, I speak to them, you know, through social media. You know, I speak to them, Lewis, you know, that's my brother. You know, all of them called him. You know, I was just speaking to Nikki, you know, she's in LA. So, 
yeah, we stay in contact with those West Coast guys, the kids from out there for sure. And yeah, it was such a moment in time for us that we can never forget, we forget each other, you know? It was amazing to, to create those bonds with those guys. Thank you so much, Lily, for your question. And of course, if you guys have any more, feel free to drop them into the um, chat or hit the Q&A button. Another question um, is from um, an anonymous attendee. And they ask, do you think there should be more representation from ballroom movements in various studies? Um, yeah, I legendary. Yeah, I know that a lot, there's been a lot of discussion, uh, a lot of discussion about that. And I gotta say, I, I kind of agree. I mean, we should be open to people that know more of the community and that, uh, you know, know what it is and what it, what it, what it means, you know, to judge of all, to, right. to, to see, to look for certain things. You know, because right now I believe the only person is Naomi. Right? Yeah, Naomi is the only uh, you know judge that's really you know from the ballroom scene that's participated that knows what it is. Yeah, but I think yeah, it should be definitely open up the floor a bit to other people who have you know put put it put a mark on this ballroom thing and that know what they're talking about. You know, for sure. Um, another question we received is from Lindsay. She asked, what is your favorite project or performance you've ever been a part of? Oh my God, what is my favorite project or performance that I've been a part of? Well, of course, I mean, uh, performance-wise, it's that moment, you know, way back when I was a kid and I got the chance to perform for a sea of 350,000 people. So that Madonna job, I have to say, you know, was the moment that I would always remember to achieve that at such an early age, it definitely impacted me in such a way, you know? So I would have to say that, and then other moments that came after that, you know, doing the Met now, things like that. So there's been a few, but I have to say, moving on that world of a stage, you know, as a kid was definitely something that I would always remember. A question from Colleen is, what cities in Europe would you consider the biggest Berlin city? Um, Colleen is from Berlin. Berlin, hi. But yeah, she was wondering what cities in Europe would you consider have the biggest Berlin In Europe, I would have to say Paris is really like, you know, jumping, as they say, you know, it's really big out there. Paris, Italy as well, you know, I see, I, I was out there working I uh, attended some, some events that were being had out there. And I have to say, definitely uh, in Europe, Italy, Paris, you know, London, there's a crazy scene, you know, thriving in London. Yeah, a lot of talent, a lot of, a lot of beautiful, beautiful talents in ballroom, you know, iconic figures, for sure. Um, we also have a question um, wondering about if you offer any like online classes for those who aren't in New York City and want to um, learn both of you. Um, I don't know. It depends. I, I'm a very, uh, this is such something that's so passionate, so dear to me. I'm very passionate about, about my craft. And I'm very, you know, guarded when it comes to sharing my gift. You know, it's, you know, it's not something that I just do, you know, oh yeah, it's, I don't look at it as like, okay, I'm going to teach whoever and just for the sake of making a few bucks. So it depends. It depends, you know, on so many things, you know, because I'm very sensitive about my artistry and to share it with someone, you know, dancing, a teacher, you know, you become a student of mine, you become my little apprentice, so to speak, is the way I look at it, is the way I approach it. So I'm very guarded with sharing that type of stuff. You know, like if you're my student, not to say that you only can learn from me, but no, I'm sharing my gifts with you. And I think nowadays everyone just wants to learn how this person and what they do, and it's just about, you know, no, I like to like, you know, if you're a student, I want to be able to mold you and make you, you know, and, and grow, watch you grow and stuff, you know. So it depends. I mean, I'm open, you know, I don't do it a lot, you know, very rarely, actually. You know, I, but we'll see. Who knows? Um, a question uh, came in 
where they ask, where can someone go see ball or experience ball culture? Oh, well, here in New York, uh, before COVID, there was like open to ball, this place in Brooklyn that would hold events, you know, little mini balls and stuff that the kids would show up and kind of you know, have a little mini function with just a few categories. So, you know, it wasn't like a major ball. And yeah, here in New York, now that we're opening up again, I think, you know, there's a few balls that are coming. They're probably, be, you know, in the city in New York and some of the major clubs, the venues, you know, the latex, they do their stuff. We do that at a big venue here in the city. You know, so you just have to keep your ears to do. You know, now after COVID, a lot has changed, but I hear this things are growing. So you have to just keep your ear out for them. Um, we have um, a question about how would you describe New Way and what makes it New Way? How would I describe New Way? Wow. I would describe it as uh, such body movement, such gracefulness, such strength, flexibility, agile arms and pointed feet and beautiful silhouettes and beautiful dips and you know something out for me is something out of the norm when it comes to dancing when it comes to roping you know that's how i look at new way that's how i approached it always as a force you know as a force as you aim to make yourself these like abstract silhouettes and and you're almost like picturesque life of moving, a picture that still moves, you know, because the motion, the position, you know, creates a beauty to me in such line that it means all of that to me. And I think as a dancer, you know, is why I take it so, it, uh, that's why I take it in in such a special way, you know, because it's like amazing what I envision when I think about the new way wrong and how I see it, how I see myself doing it. We'll take two more questions, and then we'll go into a couple different um, styles. Styles, yes, because um, I want to show that too. Yeah, yeah, so we'll show you guys some of that. Um, but one question um, is from Olga, and she asks, who is your favorite New Way dancer at the moment? Wow, my favorite New Way dancer. I love uh, Aviance. Aviance, he's great. I think he's amazing. He's used to be on the line when he was here in New York. Um, now in Europe, I think he's, I don't know. <laughs> but he always is like a horse, I think, watching him for no way. Um, who else I like? Uh, yeah, uh, well, that's of course my daughter, Vicky, who's like amazing, you know, for no way out in Brazil. You know, there's a lot of talent out there. You know, my daughter, Vicky's no way. Of course, she's something to, uh, she's so beautiful to watch. But yeah, but you know, she, I know people are gonna think because she's my child and she's part of the house to say that, but it's facts, uh, you know? And yeah, and as far as the boys here, and, uh, I like Stanley too. Stanley is, is good, I like watching him. You know, these are people that, you know, if they're on the floor, they're definitely should be watched out for. Yeah, um, and in Europe, there's a few of them. I just don't remember the name, but if I see it, yeah, there's a few, you know, from out there, from, from Russia, and from, yeah, like just, you know, that they approach it with that competitive mentality, like they're at the Olympics, like they're gymnasts and stuff. Yeah, the Japanese too, they're very, very talented. Yeah, very so. But yeah. Um, a question from Mauricio is Can you give some words or advice to people who are recently starting in the world? Oh, some advice to someone who's just starting out, uh, to be resilient, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, be resilient, you know, don't be afraid, because it can be very intimidating. It's an intimidating dance, this world, man. I mean, you saw like just, and we weren't even being intentional to, but just the music and the movement, it makes you feel like, you know, like it's in, in a competitive form already. So it's hard to, to not let that intimidate you. But that's what I would say, like, don't let it, don't let it intimidate you and just go for it, you know, don't worry about it, you will be seen, you know, and because if you're just quick to go home, then you're not built for this, 
So yeah, be resilient and just learn and watch and perfect and and bold, bold like it's your life. Bring that into your performance because that's what's gonna make you win. You know that energy that you provide. You know you tell a story for this movement and people are gonna believe that. Make them believe it. You know, and I say bringing all of that into it would definitely will make you a good bolder, good you know force in the board machine. Um, last quick question, um, uh, just because I think this is more technical, um, and I think it would be really helpful, but they asked how important is doing clicks for new way? Can I be good at new way even if I don't click on the shoulder? Yes, you can be good at new way. Can you explain what a click is for those who are Yeah, a click is the double jointed stuff, and I was explaining, but it's like the idea of something like that, you know, like you do all of that stuff, you know, clicking. You know that thing, or anything double jointed and stuff like that. You know, no, they're not a must to do. They're not a must. People do it all the time, and it gets a bit repetitive. I mean, I've seen people that just—that's all they do. You know, just, those are tricks, and I, I do them as well. You know, I'm not saying that that's not all what I'm doing. You know, ideas before that, before that trip, there was definitely something that came before that that was broken. Something definitely that comes out for that after that looks like great. That's bold, you know. And I think people when they bring all that clicking, you know, they think because people are like, oh my god, wow, this, you know, it's kind of like it becomes like a circus, you know, like it becomes like you're just doing tricks, like you would see at a circus, you know. So I try not to do too many of them, you know, because it's bold, you know. It's not bogging and a click is a must, you know. They're just things that you acquire and kind of hopefully. Hopefully, it would get you a 10. So you show that all. You know, you, you do it. But it's, to me, it's not something that makes a boat or, or a performer. It may add, but it's not what makes one, for sure. Awesome. Well, I think we can move on to the next part. All right. Final part in the showing you all different styles. These are the ones I'm going to show you guys, you know, because again, you know that there's different styles that have come about throughout the years. And they're going to, uh, show you some both fan, you know, that dark horse, they're gonna show you those elements you were speaking of, you know, and yeah, that's it. So Alvarez and Maxi will again and the basis. Started one at a time so that they see and then you know and then yeah. yeah. Yeah, like so I'm going to time in there. And remember, perform my so that you get to see everything you're doing. You heard it? Come on, we hear.
where can people find you uh, online if they want to get in touch with you or your house? house or Tasha Beth Extravaganza. Yes, roll on Instagram. Uh, Jose Extravaganza, it's exactly that. House of Extravaganza on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, these guys as well, Maximo Extravaganza and Alvarez uh, Delgado. And yeah, that's the best way to find us, to find me. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us.